Good morning and welcome to our service today. We're glad you are here. Greg, do we get to, is it turned on? The, okay, thank you, Greg and, and Tanner for taking care of that. Patty just told me to make sure that I, <laughs> that I took care of it, so I wanted to make sure I took care of it. We're glad you're here today. We have a great service, I hope, planned for you. And not only that, but after the service, I know um, Debbie's will say more if you want to come, come on up, Debbie, and, um, and announce that for us. Um, and several announcements this morning, and Bill is trying to um, share, want to share with us, hopefully, about a new program that we invite we'll, we will invite you to be a part of so Debbie if you want to come up um, before as Debbie's coming though um, as Debbie, Debbie you're, as De as, can we get a microphone to you though because we can't we want everybody to hear you over there the Ann Robinson circle would like to thank the Methodist meme for serving for the mother daughter banquet on Monday and if you were here, you got to hear Robin and um, Logan Darnell, <laughs> uh, Logan Darnell on Monday, and I heard different people say it. They really had a blessing from that. We also today are having a steak and gravy dinner after church, uh, eight dollars if you're eating here. And we hope to see everybody that's here, but since there's not a whole lot of us, come down and eat. I was making a list. If you need to leave right after church and would like to take one with you, I can arrange that. So you could just walk down and pick it up and go on out the door if you want to do that. And we thank you all for your support. Thank you, Debbie. Brooke Burns, will you stand up? I know Brooke is, uh, I want to try to get this right this morning. Brooke is state champion in yes. shot i'm hearing it. which is it discus everybody else i'm hearing shot put in this state champion in discus runner up in shot put right congratulations thank you brooklyn the flowers under the cross this morning um are there placed there by Lee and Sherry Schlegel in memory of Mary Elizabeth Naylor. Thank you, Lee and Sherry. Other announcements this morning. I know the kayak race has been postponed until August. Okay, so we'll say more as time goes. It'll, we'll, so it will serve as our kickoff to the fall activities. Um, the river is too high for kayaking. Not too high for baptizing. Anybody want to get? <laughs> Perfect for baptisms. Huh? Yeah, we need to keep it going. Yeah. It's just right for baptism. Are there other now? Yes. Is it a Right. Alleluia Choir is on hiatus for the season. All right, for the summer. And so uh, we will continue the Wednesday night activities until the, la the last Wednesday of May will be our final Wednesday night together uh, until fall. So we'll have a meal each Wednesday night. Cross trainers and pathfinders will continue to meet. Um, on the final Wednesday of this month, we'll have communion. And everyone will be invited to be a part of the communion service, okay, on the last Wednesday night here of the, of the month. We're having to improvise, it looks like. We are, as we're getting that ready, I want to remind you, um, if you're not signed up for the Kroger Rewards Program, um, pl please check with Patty in the office. The Kroger Rewards Program is every time, if you sign up for this through Kroger's, Patty will help you do it if you're not. Um, when you buy something at Kroger's, um, a percentage of that um, goes back into our account. Okay, so if you purchase something, a percentage of that goes into our church account, and it goes to the Parsonage Fund. It's how we upkeep the Parsonage, okay? So if you're not a part of Kroger Rewards, it won't cost you anything but if, you're, you're, if you spend anyhow, just a 
portion of that, a percentage, goes back to us. We get a check for it, that amount, every quarter. And um, it is sometimes significant, okay? Oh, wow. <laughs> Bill, you've been fishing. Uh, yeah, not one you caught. But um, what we're doing now is we are now signed up for what's called Amazon Smile. Okay, and so works the same way. You buy through Amazon and a portion of that proceed comes back into the church. Okay, and so uh, in the next newsletter, Patty's going to have written out detailed instructions for you to um, sign up for this. And so again, won't cost you anything, but if you make a purchase through Amazon, Amazon then sends a percentage of that to the church. Okay? And so again, if you have more questions, um, please don't hesitate to call the office. As they're setting up, are there any more announcements? All right. Bill, we about ready? Oh, we're ready. We'll, we'll do this and then we'll greet and then we'll begin the service. All right, Bill. Uh, sure. okay. Yeah, this? Yeah. Hello. There's no frustration like computer frustration, <laughs> but we are functioning here and I would like to talk to you about the Amazon Smile program that Rick mentioned. This is similar to the Kroger program, but in this case, Amazon.com will donate to us one half percent of the purchase price. Now, I don't think many of you are on Amazon, but there might be a couple. But what, what you do, what you do if you are an Amazon.com member is to, next slide please, can, <laughs> let's see if it'll change. We may be stuck. Ah, here we go. Okay, the key first step is to sign in to smile.amazon.com. And uh, you can see where that arrow is, smile.amazon.com. That will take you to the first sign-in page for amazon.com like you are used to. Then, uh, uh, there's my sign-in there. We're not going to do that part of it yet. But, uh, okay, Ken, go change again, please. Okay, uh, that doesn't show well, but in the upper left, it will say supporting the institution that you are interested in, us. Next, please, Ken. Here it zooms in. Now, now notice this. When you go to smile.amazon.com, in the upper left, smile is added, and it will work on regular Amazon or Prime. So you've signed in. And it says here, supporting Madison United Methodist Church. Notice a little arrow on the right by church. You can click that to pick what you want to support. Next, please, Ken. So it'll pick one for you. If you like the Alzheimer's Association or the Red Cross or whatever. Or pick your own charitable organization. There it is at the bottom. Type it in. There will be 10... Madison United Methodist Churches. <laughs> it's best for us if you pick the one from West Virginia. And it, it will be the first one, I hope. <laughs> okay, next, please. <laughs> and you, where it says search for charitable organization, you type in the name of our church, or there is an organization that keeps track of charitable organizations. That's a good job. They probably get paid. In, it's called GuideStar, and you can search our church using the GuideStar number that you see right there. And uh, you shouldn't have to do that, but there it is. So uh, next picture, please. 
Uh, let's see, if you don't like to find your charitable organization that way, where it says accounts and lists, there's a little down arrow, accounts and lists. You hit that and a bunch of things appear that let you pick and one of those will be at the charitable organizations. So you can do more than one way to get where you want to go with this. And if you do, let's see what else we have, Ken. If you do it, then we're smiling, <laughs> we're happy. <laughs> okay, down, please. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So, well, no, thank you. Uh, call me at home if you want help doing this, if you get stuck. So, uh, I, I've learned a little bit about it. I like the catfish. <laughs> thank you, Bill. And I will say, Bill worked hard getting this um, set up for us to be able to use Amazon.Smile. Take a moment, say hello to someone. You ready? <laughs> Lois will have our morning scripture reading this morning, found in the, it's the 148th Psalm, found in your hymnal, page 861 to 862. It will be in a responsive reading. Thank you, Lois. I was coming to help you. I wasn't thinking. I was a little slow there. <laughs> Seemed like the White family's on the order today. <laughs> this is Psalm 148 on page 861. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise the Lord in the heights. Praise the Lord, all his angels. Praise the Lord, all his sons. Praise the Lord, sun and moon. Praise the Lord, all shining stars. Praise the Lord, high heavens and all waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord who commanded and they created. Who established them forever and ever and fixed their bounds which cannot be passed. Praise the Lord from the earth, sea monsters and all deeps. Fire and hail, snow and smoke, stormy wind fulfilling God's command. Mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars. Beasts and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds. Kings of the earth and all peoples, prince and all rulers of the earth. Young men and maidens together, old men and children. Let them praise the name of the Lord, whose name alone is exalted, whose glory is above earth and heaven. God has raised up the Lord for his people. Praise for all his faithful ones, for the people of Israel, for the Lord of their God. Praise the Lord. This is the word of God to the people of God. Thanks Thank you. Be to God. Would you pray with me, please? Oh God, you are above all things. There is none more worthy than you of our praise. Lord, we praise you for this day. We praise you for the gift of life. We praise you for the gift of salvation. We praise you for allowing us to be here today. We praise you for the wonderful smells that are coming from the kitchen. We praise you for the birds singing. We praise you for the sun shining. Lord, we know you are responsible for everything.
thing. Thank you, God, for every good thing you give us. We humbly come to you and we ask you to be here with us, to sit with us, and to guide us. Send your spirit that we may be guided in knowing and learning and having open hearts and open minds. Bless Rick as he brings our message. Bless the choir as they bring the message in song. And Lord, bless us that we may be forever grateful and sing your praises. Amen. Thank you. Would you stand this morning as we sing our first hymn, page 62, All Creatures of Our God and King. First four verses. First four verses. <laughs> may be seated. We invite all the children this morning to join, I think, Victor this morning up at the front. All the children. Any children with us this morning? Not as many today, but you, or there are some. Come on up, guys, and join Victor. We got some Come on down. Big kids too. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it's on. There we go. Come on over. Good morning. Hey, buddy. <laughs> maybe as far as maybe, maybe not. <laughs> That's okay. There's something about your victory. I know. I know. I know. I'm not too scary. Good morning. Good morning. 
You know, one of the greatest gifts that God has given us is each other. And with great gifts come some great responsibilities and duties. We have a duty to pray for each other, to encourage each other, to lift each other up, and to teach each other. So in light of that, I was led this morning to share an experience that I had a few years back with you guys. Now, in order for you to fully understand the story I'm going to tell you, I have to teach you a Hebrew word, or actually two Hebrew words, El Shaddai. Now, El Shaddai means God Almighty. Okay, that's important to what I'm going to share with you now. A few years back, I was coming from a picnic in Jackson County. It was a Saturday, and it's about, oh, two or three in the afternoon, and I was on Corridor G, and driving back to Madison, and in front of me, there was no traffic. Behind me, there was no traffic. And I was listening to a CD that was given to me by Robin. And on that CD, about the fourth track, was a song titled El Shaddai by Amy Grant. So as is my habit, I was singing along with the song. And as the song ended, I said a prayer in my mind. And that prayer was, God, there's really nothing wrong, but, you know, I'd just like to hear from you. And no sooner had that thought or that prayer crossed my mind, and mind you, I had just looked in the mirror front and back, I saw a car to my right starting to slowly but deliberately pass me. It was a white Cadillac. And when the car pulled up far enough that I could see the license plate, it read, El Shaddai. I think that's God's way of telling me that he's always with me. And the reason I wanted to share that with you is because I want to tell you that God loves you. He loves each of us. That he's always with us, even when we can't see him. And if you have something that's going on in your life, and you just want to talk to God, you always can. It doesn't have to be something that's bad wrong. Share the good things with him, because he is our best, best friend. So please keep that in mind. Let us pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to be here today. God, we thank you for your house and your people. We thank you, God, for the young ones and the opportunity to share with them, God, the experiences that you share with us. We praise you and we thank you. In Jesus' most holy and precious name, amen. amen. Hang on. Good morning. So I have a funny little thing. Uh, many, many Wednesdays I put on our choir Facebook what we're going to be singing on Sunday morning. So I said, so this Sunday's anthem is going to be, I go to the Rick. Yes. <laughs> you know, we always make typos sometimes, but that was kind of profound. I was wondering what I'm supposed to do when you arrive. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, aren't we fortunate and blessed to have Rick that we can yes. go to? Yes. But even better than that, we have a rock that we can go to. So, let's go to the rock. Rick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> else to turn to who do I talk to when nobody wants to listen who do I lean on when there's no foundation stable I go to the rock I know he's able I go to the 
brick. I go to the rock of my salvation. I go to the stone that the builders rejected. I go to the mountain and the mountain stands by me. When the winds of sorrow beckon, and is there a refuge, a refuge in the times of tribulation? I go, oh, I know he's able, I go to the rock. I go to the rock of my salvation. I go to the stone that the builders rejected. I run. When I need a savior, when I need some forgiveness, when I need some assurance, when I need a Melody even laughed about that. We'll go to the Lord in prayer at this time. I want to share with you, you may already know, um, Phyllis Fulton um, had an unfortunate fall last Saturday and was not actually found until Sunday. And um, she is in Charleston General. She did have a severe break that re required surgery. Um, it's hard to describe it as one break up near the hip is a hip fracture is what they're calling it um, Phyllis um, has a long road ahead of her and uh, if you'd like to send her a card I know she would appreciate that or even some folks have visited with her but um, please keep Phyllis Fulton in your prayers also I want to mention Andy Spratt this morning uh, we have been keeping Andy and Nelda in prayer Andy is um, scheduled for surgery this week on Thursday. Um, keep Andy in your prayers. He's been waiting for this surgery now for a while and eating it badly. Um, also, I want to mention to Fred and Doris Duty. Uh, they've not been able to be with us in a long while. Um, unfortunately, now Fred is um, in at Meadowbrook. Fred is at Meadowbrook, and Doris is staying with a daughter. But please keep Fred and Doris in your prayers. I know Jack has visited Fred, and, and um, I'm sure that would be appreciated too. Keep Fred and Doris in your prayers. Are there others this morning? We'll get a microphone to you to share, so you can share with us your prayer concerns. 
Dylan? Um, my sister's boyfriend, Cody Lovejoy, he's in the hospital right now. He has something going on with his heart. Okay, first name again? Cody. Cody, thank you. James. James, okay. Tom? Uh, remember, my brother Randy will probably have surgery on uh, Wednesday at Cabell Huntington. And uh, Sue Ann's brother Gary, who's had, got some issues and problems going on right now. Okay. Okay, Lois? Uh, <coughs> my neighbor Judy Bass needs prayers. Okay, thank you. <coughs> Others? All right. There are many answered prayers sitting with us this morning. We are continue, continuing, continuing to give thanks for each of you. And um, Jonna, glad to have you with us this morning. Well, we've been praying for you. And still yet, Harold, looking good, doing good, right? Valerie says he's doing better each and every day. Billy, glad for you to be still able now to get feeling better. And um, others, I don't want to, uh, always are reluctant to call out names because you know what happens <laughs> as you get older, Jack. It may not happen to you, but I am starting to forget. No, yeah, I know, it's hard to, hard, surprising. Huh? Uh, we've been praying for our friend Mary Th Clay Thompson, and she went to Houston, Texas and had a bunch of tests made, and there is no cancer. Yay! Amen. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. And Kenny Bias. Okay. Lee. Lee. Okay. East Step. And okay. Thank you. By show of hands, other unspoken concerns this morning, would you join with me today in prayer? Almighty God, you are the God of all creatures of all living things you are the god of everything help us to always remember this and help us really to believe it as we look around us lord it's you're in this creation all that surrounds us help us lord to find ways to give thanks to you for, Lord, you are the giver of all this. Help us, Lord, when we look at our brothers and sisters, when we look at our neighbors, whoever our neighbor may be, help us to remember that, Lord, they are, too, people whom you love. Whenever we hear of needs and prayer concerns, those issues in life that others face, God, help us to be mindful of their pain. Help us to be mindful, Lord, of that which they are going through. And Lord, help us to be willing to respond. Here am I, Lord. What may I do? Lord, we are thankful, God, for the gift of prayer. And Lord, we oftentimes see answered prayers right before us, yet we often fail to recognize it. But yet, God, there is living proof all around that miracles still exist. All they may not be as they occurred in the Bible, yet they occur. And God, you are still the miracle worker. And every time we pray, whether we are lifting up the names of those whom we know of or we're lifting up ourselves, whatever the prayer request may be, we are praying for a miracle. And Lord, each person here this morning, on our heart there is something. And we lift them up to you right now. And we lift up again Denny and Lee. Phyllis and Andy and Nelda, Fred and Doris, Cody and James. 
Randy and Gary, Judy, Mary, and Kenny. In your mercy, Lord, hear and receive our prayers. And Lord, help us now as we join our voices together as one voice, one heart, one body. We pray the prayer of faith you taught your disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory forever. Amen. We invite the ushers to please come. Um, <laughs> just you, Jay. <laughs> Would you join with me, Ernest? Yeah, one. Join with me in prayer. God of limitless love. Your love washes over us as ocean waves, Lord, and cleanses us, and Lord, and gives new life each and every day. Lord, your love is all around us, Lord, in the creation that you've allowed us to be a part of, that which we see, that sometimes that we even hear. Lord, in the food that we taste, and so many things, reminders God of your presence as Victor taught us today Lord these gifts that we give back into you may they go forth Lord to touch others so that others will know God that we indeed are yours by the love that we show bless now we pray God these gifts Lord and your people in Christ's name we pray amen
invite you to remain standing. Will there be children's church? Shauna has children, our junior church today, so children are dismissed for junior church with Shauna. In your bulletin, there is the insert of an oldie, but a very goodie, Love Lifted Me. you to remain standing for the reading of our scripture lesson this morning found in the 11th chapter of the book of Acts. The apostles and the brothers throughout Judea heard that the Gentiles also had received the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers criticized him and said, you went into the house of uncircumcised men and ate with them. Peter began and explained everything to them precisely as it happened. Well, I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision. I saw something like a large sheep being let down from heaven by its four corners, and it came down where I was. I looked into it and saw four-footed animals of the earth, wild beasts, reptiles, and birds of the air. Then I heard a voice telling me, Get up, Peter! kill and eat. I replied, surely not, Lord. Nothing impure or unclean has ever entered my mouth. The voice spoke from heaven a second time, do not call anything impure that God has made clean. This happened three times. And then it was all pulled up to heaven again. Right then, three men who had been sent to me from Caesarea stopped at the house where I was staying. The Spirit told me to have no hesitation 
about going with them. These six brothers also went with me, and we entered the man's house. He told us how he had seen an angel appear in his house and say, Send a Joppa for Simon, who is called Peter. He will bring you a message through which you and your household will be saved. And as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit came on them as he had come on us at the beginning. Then I remembered what the Lord had said. John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So if God gave them the same gift as he gave us who believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I to think that I could oppose God? The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. If you've been in my office, you have noticed probably the mess that is on my bookshelves. Lots of books that haven't been read in a long time. Some have never been read, but they look good there, all right? And tablets, tablets, big tablets full of um, things inside them and so forth taken from, or notes taken from seminary and, and so forth and every so often I'll look back through them and as I look back through my notes from seminary I st I'm still amazed at all I had to endure. All the theology classes, all kinds of them. Wesleyan theology, systematic theology, practical theology, historical theology, all kinds of type, all types of theologies that some I can't even pronounce the names of. But I endured them. And I remember, however, how productive these classes were for me. After all, as I sat through them, they provided a lot of time to do my sermons. <laughs> to, to, you know, to, to do things that uh, wouldn't get done any other time. And I learned that all you really had to do was keep one eye open, right? One ear open and nod on occasion. Right, just make sure that they knew that you were sort of listening. Theology, the study of the nature of God and religious belief. That's the definition that the dictionaries give us. But it, theology forms what we believe, what we say about God and who God is. And you are most likely, each and every one of you, we're all most likely theologians, whether we realize it or not, because somewhere along the way we all give thought to who God is and what God does. And somewhere along the way we all do study on that subject. We all hold to a particular theology. Each one of us holds to some type of theology, a faith, you might say, that we hold on to, that is embedded in our hearts. But the question for us today is this, is it possible for us, you and I, me included, to have two theologies, two faiths in the same heart? Well, I would argue yes. And I would argue the proof is in the Bible, right before us, and a man named Peter. You've heard of him most likely. I've often said that Peter is one of those biblical characters that reminds me of somebody else. Me. Sometimes saying all the right things. 
sometimes opening his mouth one too many times, and the wrong thing comes out. Peter is the subject of our text this morning. Peter has, in our text that we read, found himself under scrutiny. Why did he find himself under scrutiny? Because Peter went to the home of a Gentile. And not only did he go to the home of the Gentile, Peter sat down and ate supper with the Gentile. It's interesting, Peter, if you recall, was, one of the, was accused one time, when right before Jesus was killed, Peter was accused of being one of those who followed Jesus, of being right there with Jesus. But then Peter did what? He denied Jesus. He denied even knowing Jesus. He denied ever being a part of Jesus' entourage. But now he is criticized for doing exactly the same thing Jesus did. You remember what Jesus did and what they accused him of and scrutinized him for? He ate with sinners. Ate with them. And tax collectors. Can't think of, oh well, we'll go into that. But he ate with them. Now we must know, however, that when Peter sat down with a, to a meal with these Gentiles, we got to be fair and honest, Peter did not want to. It was not his choice to do so. No, in fact, Peter even tried getting out of it. He, he did his best. In fact, Peter even argued with God on the matter. Why did Peter, why would Peter possibly argue with God? Well, because Peter was a Jew, and Peter was a good Jew, and Peter held the Jewish faith tightly in his heart. Peter knew the law. Peter knew what was clean, and he knew what was unclean. Peter knew what he could eat, and he knew what to avoid that was unclean. Then God had the nerve to tell Peter, Peter... You can eat the catfish. Peter, you can eat the shrimp. Peter, you can have the pork chops too. Peter, the bacon smells good, doesn't it? Peter, you can have the bacon. Peter, you can eat things that are off limits to Jews. Peter knew in his heart what was right. And that was a problem. It was there. He'd been told since he was a kid, no, Peter, no, Peter. Just like a, or just like a man named Saul. We know him as the Apostle Paul. Paul, or Saul, if you remember his history, once upon a time he terrorized the church. They would eventually serve and found many of. Why did Saul terrorize the church? Because he knew the law. It was in his heart. It was there. And he not only knew the law, but Saul was bound and determined to keep the law. Saul was bound and determined, and bound and determined to live by the law. This faith that was embedded in his heart drove Saul. He knew what was right. Just like a man named Jonah. You may have heard of him. The man who did not go where he was told to go and ended up being swallowed by a fish. Jonah did not avoid going to Nineveh to preach because he was afraid, as many preachers make the story all about, and how they have a Jonah complex and they don't want to preach and so forth. That wasn't what it was all about. That wasn't why he did not go. Instead, Jonah avoided going to Nineveh because of the faith that he held in his heart. A faith that declared they aren't worthy. A faith that declared they are not worthy of God's grace and love. 
A faith that reminded him that he and his people were God's chosen people, not them. Not those people down there. Not the Assyrians. Not the Ninevites. Not them. Peter, they said, got right in his face, I suppose. You went to the home of a sinner. You ate with these people. And Peter then tells in our passage of his predicament. What was he supposed to do? And I think that's the best way to describe it for Peter. He found himself in a predicament. Peter, don't you dare call unclean what God has made clean. How do you argue? How do you argue with that? I call that a predicament. Jonah found himself in the belly belly of a large fish. Notice I didn't say whale because the Bible doesn't say whale. Just like Eve didn't take, or the woman we learned last week, did not eat from the apple. Because the Bible never says it was an apple. No, we do. Tradition says that. But can't you just hear God Somehow, as he speaks to us, Victor, from the license plate of a car, speaking to Jonah deep inside the belly of a whale, I can just hear it now, Jonah, hey, are you finally ready to listen? Right? Are you finally willing to listen to me? Folks, I don't know about you, but I would say that when you find yourself in the belly or sleeping on a foam blubber mattress, that is a predicament. That is a predicament. Saul, Saul heard a voice from heaven. Folks, when you hear a voice from heaven, you probably want to listen. Saul heard a voice from heaven. And not only that, a light flashing all around him. Uh, some of us in the fall, late winter, early winter, winter got to see Trans-Siberian Orchestra. My visual is this. If you ever seen a Trans-Siberian Orchestra concert and the lights that are going everywhere and every direction. Keith was there working there and the lights just coming at you. I can almost imagine Saul is seeing something like this. Lights. Saul! Saul! He heard the voice. He was blinded. Hearing a voice. I would call it a predicament. But perhaps the greatest predicament these three faced. Was the predicament of the theology they wrestled with. The theology not that grandpa or grandma embedded in their heart. Not the theology that was handed down to them that they were told they had to abide by because it was right and everything else was wrong. No, not that one that we uh, go by because why? It's what the church says to go by. It's a popular one to go by and so forth. But the theology they wrestled with every day. One that wasn't popular. One that they could not really disclose. One that went against everything they knew. Yet they knew was true. A theology that left Peter to look at these folks and ask the question, hey, who am I to oppose God? Who am I to say, God, uh uh-uh, you are all wrong. Poor Jonah, he knew in his heart that the Ninevites were heathens. He knew they were bad. He knew they were not worthy. But the problem was he declared. In the very beginning of the whole thing, he declared, I am Hebrew. And I reverence the Lord God of heaven who made the sea 
and the land. What did he declare? I believe, he says, that God is God of who? All creatures. God, Jonah declared in that statement, made then, oh goodness, even the Ninevites. And in his heart, Jonah knew that. Saul, he with great zeal fought to keep his faith alive against the threat of a new movement, one that taught grace, one that taught faith, a new movement that did not teach holding on to the law and keeping the law. Yet all the while, knowing that the law he fought to keep and to save, all the while knowing inside that law could not save him. He knew down deep inside that the law he terrorized for couldn't give him the freedom within that perhaps he so longed for. He knew that the law that he regulated over others could not give him the peace. That peace inside. Proof being, I think, in the language found in the King James Version, I'll get you out of here in time. It's not time to eat yet. They haven't texted me. Iris not down there to text me. <laughs> but it's time to eat. Um, in the King James Version, if you want to know proof that Saul is wrestling with something in his heart that he could not disclose, that went against, he's wrestling with something going against that law. The King James Version, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Why kick against the, it's a dirty word, I hope my mom's not listening online, why kick against the pricks? The word for that word, I just said, won't say again. In Greek, literally means an iron goad. And you think of an iron anvil. And the Lord has said, why are you kicking against this iron? All you're doing is hurting yourself because you're not getting anywhere with it. Saul, Saul, why? Why are you doing it? Peter saw firsthand how far God's hand would stretch. God's love reached even into the home of a Gentile, uncircumcised sinner, who probably didn't know anything about the law, who probably uh, couldn't tell you any of the, the books of the law, yet God poured out his spirit on this man, on this sinner, on this Gentile, uncircumcised man. How far is God's love willing to go even today? Who does God love today? Who does God want to reach? Who does God call mine, my own? Who does God want saved? Who am I? Who am I to oppose God in doing that? And there was a fourth individual, and I'll close. A man named Cornelius. The Gentile, the uncircumcised sinner, if you will, that Peter visited. You see, Cornelius knew who he was. Cornelius knew he was one of those outsiders, Gentiles, uncircumcised. Cornelius knew he was not one of them. And there are those today who understand in their heart what they've been told and shown and said, what was said to them, that really, they don't, we, we, we're not one of them. We don't belong. There are those who know in their heart, yes, I am a sinner. 
Yes, I, no, I can't tell you what the Bible says about them. No, I don't know the books of the Bible. I can't tell you how to get the, I, I don't know. All I know is, I, I, I'm, that's who I am. But thank goodness for those in spite of what they know. Like the woman who went to Jesus begging for crumbs. And Jesus says, you know, you, you know in your heart, you can't come and ask me for anything. You know in your heart that it's all for who? Right, the Jews. But she says, I know that. But, but, they also know in their heart that the God of all creation, God who we say is love, and we say, we quote John 3.16, they know in their heart that in spite of who they are, in spite of what they've been told, John 3.16 includes them. It includes them. God of all creatures, we sang earlier. May we, the church, remember that. May we, the church, believe that. May God bless you. Let's sing our final hymn this morning. The gift of love, page 408. And this morning, it may be that you're here and you're wrestling within your heart with what you've been taught and told, but you're also wrestling with what you know to be true. The gift of love. Faster you run, the faster I can run. We'll get out of here. All right. <laughs>
Not really. You, you got a gown on. You'll get tripped up. And I'll trip right away. Okay. It is so good to have the kids as part of our um, church family, but not just part of our church family, but, but actual participants. Actual participants. And this is, think about what the church family is. This is, the, this is the body where we all are working together. Hope you can join us for the meal downstairs. I have been smelling it for a while, and um, I know it's going to be good. Uh, my wife, I, I tell this, I know she won't watch it, because um, uh, this morning, and I tell Danny this, I, my wife is not feeling well, and she said, I'll miss the steak dinner. I said, well, honey, I can, I can fix it for you, because I'll sometimes fix it. And she said to me, but yours isn't Danny's. <laughs> oh. Well, fine. <laughs> we'll have Danny come and cook for you. <laughs> She'd kill me if she knew I said that. Let's dismiss. I'll ask the blessing over the food. Invite you to stay with us. Lord, it's always good to be together with your people as part of the worship service. So, Lord, this morning, God, as we leave here, we hope to be able to continue our time together by sitting at table with each other. Bless each one here, Lord, and where we may go throughout this day. But if we sit at table together, Lord, today downstairs, we do pray. Lord, you bless that time and bless the food that awaits us, Lord, that it might nourish us, Lord, and sustain us throughout this afternoon. Bless those who have worked long and hard to prepare it for us. Go with us now, we ask in Christ's name. Amen. <laughs>